What's up, Beardos? We're here at uh, <laughs> Burt's Black Widows. I walk in over here, I'm bringing the uh, Backwoods Banana Pan America in for service, and they need the bags off of it because they uh, uh, kind of borrowed the bags off another floor model here. I uh, walk back my, past my man over here, and he goes, you got my bags? <laughs> Listen up, baby. They call me the candy cane man, baby. I always got the bags. Uh, my man here just bought a brand new Pan America. Hasn't even ridden it yet. Not even a test ride yet. And I was like, "How do you? what do you think of it? He goes, haven't even rode it yet? I was like, dude, it's about to blow your socks off. Here. Yes, we have your bags. I would recommend if you're going to take them anywhere that they have to pass customs or an airport or any other kind of test, uh, make sure they're clean thoroughly. Not that there's anything that will get you in trouble. I just don't want, I just oh, don't want you to get you held up. Oh, no. no, it's all gone, but the residue stays. I, I get where you're coming from. All right, my man Rob here. Oh, you got it with the, did it already have the Vance this and Hines on it or? This is the Burt's Belt. Everyone thinks that there's no off-road riding in Florida and there's maybe not as much, but it's definitely there. So I meant to do this over last winter, but this coming up winter, we're going to be doing some adventure riding in Florida, man. I'm putting together a couple rides. We always do rides. We do bar hopping, which I love, but uh, you know, we can drink in the woods too. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually a Pan Am is the uh, fastest, best handling thing in a Harley Davidson dealership, but that's not why I came up here today. I came up here to test ride something completely different. Talk about if money was no object. 131 cubic inches, we got the legends up front. I had a bike once, Road King Kong. This is literally Road King Kong with a fairing. Legends up front, legends in the rear. This is exactly that. If you ever saw Road King Kong and you like that build, you're looking at the fared version of it right now. And uh, I will tell you, out of all the bikes we've ever given away, that's the one I miss the most. This bike ain't a giveaway. This is for sale. But I am sure looking forward to revisiting some of those memories on a, on a big old 130 one man that's a chunk of horsepower right there 131 cubic inches of fun man again this is literally just the road glide version of road king kong i guess it's not the road glide version of road king kong this is just road glide king kong i don't know whatever you want to call it <laughs> that's a familiar feeling and i like it you know, I know they got the Road Glide ST already, but uh, this is the Road Glide ST on steroids, baby. Woohoo! Yeah! That is where it's at, baby. <laughs> Damn, dude! When your speedometer moves as fast as just revving the bike when it's in neutral. Wow, that's aggressive. Yeah, you know you're doing something right. Damn, this thing is set up though. I just felt the rear wheel break loose on that one. The 131, a named sword. Makes me this Road King Kong. Lost on the Road 21, man. He got my uh, he got my dream bike, that's for sure. When we did that first build, before we ever even knew we were gonna give it away, what I did with Birds is they just said, come on, won't you, won't you pick out a bike here and we're gonna do your dream build. And what happened was Road King Kong and lost on the road, man. He took that 131, you know, people might say that 131s, you know, they don't, uh, they don't have any longevity. Holy mackerel, dude. Uh, yeah, they got plenty of longevity because Lost on the Road has put something like 30, 40,000 miles on that bike. He's ridden it across the country and back from Portland, Oregon to the camp out in Tampa. Trust me, the 131 is rowdy as hell, dude. This thing does not play. It's a freaking gorilla. More than a gorilla, this thing is King Kong, baby. I don't know if this one could be King Kong. Maybe this one's Mighty Joe Young, man. Whatever you want. But it is a big old silverback, I'll tell you that right now. You know, it's something else when you can hop on a road glide and it's faster than a Pan America. Dude, I can't believe with that two into one pipe, too. I think just cruising. Man, it feels faster than Road King Kong because Road King Kong had uh, Bassani two, uh, like two into two, and this two into one pipe on this thing, it really gives it a lot more kick down low. Not that it needed any more kick. Road King Kong had plenty of kick, trust me, but it just even more down low. And there you go, man. I can't believe how how tame it is in Top Gear. That's the thing about these 131s, man. Like I said, Road King Kong across the country and back, lost on the road, tours on that thing all the time. He bought a tour pack for it. And I know he loves Road King Kong, but I think that he might have actually preferred the one with the fairing for as much touring as he does on that thing. Although, like I said, this one's still stripped down, man. It's still stripped down. It's still got that like shark nose bar hopper look that I really, really like. Listen up, daddy. This thing means a business. 
this. Uh, this is definitely one of those bikes, like, if you gotta ask the price, you can't afford it. This one is decked out. I mean, there's a reason that when I built Road King Kong, there's a, <laughs> I built it as a bike for Burt's, not my personal bike, because it's a little out of my price range. It is what it is, baby. You can cry about it being about your price range all day long. I, I don't cry about it. I just love that they exist. Holy mackerel, dude. This thing should not be allowed. That would never get old. <laughs> I believe I used to say that about Road King Kong. That would just never, ever, ever in a million years could that get old. Definitely one of those bikes, like if you gotta know how much it costs, it costs a lot. This is not a cheap motorcycle, but it's ready to go. This is turnkey, legends front and rear. This thing is ready to rock and roll, man. You ain't gotta do nothing to it except uh, sign on the dotted line, twist that throttle wide open and leave the dealership sideways. Or if you live out of state, they'll ship, actually ship it to you for free. Burt's does that, man. They actually have free shipping in the lower 48. So if you live anywhere in the continental United States, I don't care if it's uh, in Portland, <laughs> lost on the road 21, I'm looking at you. I don't care where you live in the continental United States, the lower 48, Burt's will ship this thing to your doorstep completely free. Now that goes with any new bike they sell, not just this one, which is like bad to the bone, top of the line, everything. See, if somebody buys this bike, if someone out there, man, if this is your deal and you've been saving up and you're ready to pull the trigger on the baddest bike on the showroom floor. If you don't have an Instagram, you better start one. That was my deal for Lost on the Road. You don't have an Instagram, I'm like, you got an Instagram now and I wanna see you post. If you buy this bike and you end up having it like shipped out to Washington or California to just like do canyon carving all day, you better start an Instagram if you don't have one. You better tag me so I can see what this thing gets up to. Man, this thing sounds so freaking good. But yeah, I know there's like collectors who buy bikes like this and just kind of let them sit. Dude, if you buy this bike, you better flog it, man, because these engines can take it. I know from experience. Okay, one more time. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty nuts when a, when a road fly can start to pull the front wheel off with just throttle. Maybe you want all of that 131 power. Maybe you want all that jazz. You want that gorilla beating out hot for teacher underneath the tank. Maybe that's what you want, but you don't want it in this stripped down package. Maybe you want all that 131 power in a ultra classic. Trust me, I love the stripped down look, but there's some guys out there that say, I wanna pop wheelies on something that's ready to live off of. <laughs> you could be like, yeah, dude, I live off of 131, man. This thing's ready to hit the road for a year. Oh, and the lined bags and everything. This one's actually got some miles on it, but the engine is brand new. The engine has less than a thousand miles on it. And yeah, the price is still big at $35,000. You know, that's a sticker shock for a lot of folks at 35 grand but if you know how much a 131 conversion costs and how much an ultra classic costs 35 g's for a brand new 131 in this bike is insane it feels weird to be saying that thirty-five thousand dollars is a steal but hey man i don't make the prices i'm just here to report on them and for this bike with a 131 in it that's brand new thirty-five thousand dollars is a steal this is my gonna be my first time riding a fast street glide well ultra classic <laughs> and it's weird to feel that exact same drum beat, man. That exact same back beat come to life underneath an Ultra Classic. The full Ultra Classic, too. We got the wind guards on the bottom, the tour pack. This was the entire deal. Ready and set up to just live on the road for a year. I really don't know what this is going to feel like when I twist the throttle wide open, but I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, I've ridden fast road glides before, dude. I've never ridden a fast ultra classic. Dude, it literally feels like a spaceship. Like a spaceship with a thousand pounds of thrust. Oh my God, because you can feel like it, you know, it's the same frame, it's the same chassis as, a, as the road glide, obviously, but you know, you can feel all this stuff back there. And the fact that it still does that when you open the throttle is just such a neat feeling. <laughs> I like, I like that a lot. Yeah, the whole bike has 29,000 miles on it, but the engine is brand new. What? Dude, and oh, okay, okay, I'm sold. This is actually so cool. I'm not gonna lie to you, like an ultra classic with this kind of power is wild. I, it does not feel real. 
the Rogue Glide, I'm like, oh yeah, dude, this feels like Road King Kong with a fairing. Like, I get it. I'm familiar with this bike. On this one, with like the touring seat, my tushy's all cuddled and supported with the back support. And I just feel like I'm on a, you know, a, an ultra classic, a completely, a complete dresser, a touring bike. And trust me, I know there's fast touring bikes out there. I know that there's like, I know there's fast touring bikes out there. There's touring bikes that are literally like have super sport engines in them, but they're usually like sport touring bikes. They're like half sport bikes. To get on something like this with like 150 foot pounds of torque with your butt cuddled, sitting in an easy chair, twist that throttle wide open and feel, feel the front end start to get light. That is a very neat feeling and one that uh, I don't think I would get tired of anytime soon. What the hell, man? This I gotta get off this thing. I like it too much. Plus, it's starting to rain, and uh, this bike is really, really nice. I don't wanna get it wet. And plus, uh, I know I'm not gonna be able to stop myself from just constantly twisting the throttle wide open. Oh no, it has traction control. So, you know, I mean, I guess it can rain all it wants, and I'll still twist it right open. Oh yeah, that just spun right loose. Well, it's got some traction control. <laughs> I imagine it would kick in eventually, right? Right? Dude, hand warmers and 150 foot-pounds of torque. This is like a Winnebago with a Turbo LS swap. It's fast, and you know it's fast. You feel it's fast. It just feels so, like, wrong. Wrong is the wrong word. It doesn't feel wrong. It just feels unnatural, but like unnatural in the same way when that uh, that one girl who dresses all nice and looks like a librarian, when uh, you know she takes off her glasses and does that one weird thing you like. It's definitely unnatural, but you want even more and more and more of it. I, it feels weird to call 35 grand a steal, but if you know what a 131 costs to do, completely decked out ultra classic anyway is pushing the 30K mark. Um, yeah, it is actually a steal and with a brand new motor. But once again, before I get myself in trouble, uh, real trouble, because like, you know, looking at these two bikes, trying to make a decision between these, like I would never financially recover from this. <laughs> uh, but just like that one girl that does that one thing you like, uh, I might just want to try to find out how bad that would actually hurt. So I'm going to tell you right now, it would be a hard choice. I'm just sitting here right now looking at these two bikes going like, dude, this would be a tough decision. I don't even know what I would do. I don't know what it is, man. I really do kind of just have a thing for old police vehicles. And not a thing for them in that kind of weird way that some people get where it's like, I'm, I'm on a police vehicle. I, I feel like I have the power to pull people over. I am the law. Not like that. I'm way more into the villain arc thing. And let me explain that a little further because if you don't know, uh, ex-police vehicles, both cars and motorcycles are just, uh, they're very traditionally, they're kind of hood rockets, all right? And when I say hood rocket, uh, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, once they auction these things off, you can usually buy old police vehicles for so freaking cheap. Pennies on the dollar for what they would have sold for new. And of course they've been through the ringer because the cops ain't exactly gentle with them. But one thing you can always count on is an absolutely anal maintenance schedule. So the things do get taken care of. And once they pull the lights off of them and auction them off, a lot of them just kind of go from a, a life of law enforcement to dirty deeds done dirt cheap. When I say I love ex-police vehicles, it's way more along the lines of Blues Brothers than it is along the lines of Back the Blue, all right? Or just something about taking taking a force for good and justice and everything is right let freedom ring and then using it to do nefarious deeds well you know good people doing bad things we are chaotic good we are on a mission from god pill 30 boys and when i say it's pill 30 that doesn't mean i'm supporting the pill mills okay we all know that pill mills are a great evil in this world that's why uh, you know i only get all organic all natural farm to table pills none of this factory made stuff come on you gotta shop small you gotta shop local and it doesn't get much more small or local than uh, your local plug it's important to buy from your neighbor and support your local economy okay and let me tell you this you know you need to do it because when was the last time that Pfizer or pharmacist threw an extra gram in your bag just because they like you shop small I say and support your local street pharmacist dirty deeds done dirt cheap man that's the that's the motto of any ex-police vehicle I mean 
come on, what young kid who wanted to cause a little ruckus wouldn't want an old bike or car from the cop shop? You got a beefed up suspension, hopped up motor. Yeah, it might be ugly, but you know it can take the abuse. Exactly what any young delinquent needs. And I fully support teenage delinquency, okay? I really do. You gotta breed a little recklessness into these kids, all right? It just makes for an adult with a whole lot more character. As for me, eh, you know, I still uh, do a little delinquency now and then just for nostalgia's sake, but the most reckless I get is a reckless eyeball on a waitress named Flo and counting every single button on her shirt. I think this one's an 07. This is a nice bike, man. It's got the adjustable preload back here and everything. This bike's cool. I always like the cop bikes because they got like kind of hump back here. Just I think you make it look cool, you know? Anyway, hop on. Let's see if you can figure out how to start it. <laughs> Stand it up by yourself and everything. It's a lot lighter than the TC 800. All right, let me jump on. Let me jump on a bike that's another metric bike, but very, very different from this one. Still shaft drive, <laughs> still Japanese, just a little bit more chrome, fire engine red, and alligator seat on this thing. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, electric windshield? That's where it's at, baby. Hey, listen, we got this kind of chrome. You don't need no windshield, all right? Those M109s, man, they mean business. There's just a few bikes like this muscle bike. It's funny because this is even more of an evolution from those first long and low Japanese bikes that came out as an answer to the bad boy soft tail, the long and low drag drag style bike from the 90s. That style was so popular. You know, the first like the VTX 1300 and the Yamaha Warrior, but you know, they eventually evolved into also the M109R, which definitely also still looks like a 90s throwback in the best way possible. You like it? We can sell the PC 800. You don't want to upgrade to this? This is a hell of an upgrade. I'd still, the bike wouldn't be for me, it's for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Burt's never throws a huge markup on the metric bikes. I know a lot of dealerships, when they take a trade in, they'll give the person like $500 and then put an insane markup on it. But there's always deals on metric bikes at Burt's because they don't go crazy with the markups. They always sell the metric bikes because uh, what Burt says himself, man, as long as your knees are in the breeze, he doesn't care what you're riding, man. Just that you're having fun and riding. So they're happy to get someone on a metric bike for a good price. Oh yeah, I think Shay Lisi likes that bike a lot. It's gonna be a whole hell of a lot faster and sportier than her PC 800. <laughs> hell yeah. I'm, I'm liking this M109 a novel lot myself. I'm, it's up to you. God damn, dude, this M109 rips. Also, why are the cops over there in a Jeep? They don't need no damn Jeep cops. We're just trying to do a, a little test ride here. So uh, as usual, we neglected to put license plates on these vehicles before we left. Definitely doesn't exactly uh, look like it belongs neck and neck with the with that, that ST1300. These are two very, very different breeds of bikes. the ship and she took off. I guess the ST1300, uh, it can take the M109, but it's a V4 1300cc Honda. So like that, that isn't crazy surprising. That's always the funny thing about weight differences. Jay Lisi at hundred pounds on the MT109 would probably still beat my fat ass if I was riding the ST1300, man. You can't change physics. Well, I'm on this thing and I love it. But with MT109, besides the styling, cause I get they aim for everybody. They definitely, uh, they have a unique shape. <laughs> they definitely have a, a rare, unique shape. I like I like it, but I get it ain't for everybody. But when you twist that throttle, there's no way that that ain't for everybody. All right, all right, all right. Let's park this thing because I want to see what that SC1300 is like to ride. Although with these forward controls, Shay Lisi definitely ain't riding the M109. Again, you can't change physics. Tempting, as always. You want all of them. The second you get on them, you want all of them. But one that makes a noise like this. <laughs> yeah, you want this one extra bad. Why is it so fast? Well, it makes like 120 horsepower. Well, it's a, it's a 2007. Your PC 800 is from 1989. <laughs>
to run like a bike from 1989. It's not. It's from 2007. Oh, it goes so <laughs> Technology's come a little way. <laughs> okay, let's see what this ST1300 is all about. I have done been wanting one of these, trust me. So I'm like, Shay, sell your, uh, sell your PC800. And I'm like, yes, please. And, and she's like, no, the sentimental value. I'm like, set it, sell it. Let's get this one. Oh yeah, I like this bike. Reminds me a lot of the ST1100, just with a whole lot more guts. Yeah, dude, homeboy, Homeboy put some freaking bullet chrome speakers on this thing, man. Rolling out with the tunes. I would be lying if I said I wasn't really eager for Shay Lisi to sell, sell her PC800 and I'll sell the ST1100 so she can get this bike. This thing is freaking awesome, man. And also, you know, I just got a thing for old cop bikes, man. They're just kind of funny. I like bringing them into a life of sin. I like starting them on their villain arcs. This thing handles like so good, too. Like, of course it does, man. It's not like the PC800 and the ST1100. 1100 handle horribly, but they handle like bikes from the 80s. This does not. This handles like <laughs> like a bike from 2007. Not just a bike from 2007, but but Honda's best sport touring bike from 2007. I guess best is subjective because a lot of people would like the baby version of this, which was a VFR, which is definitely not a baby version, just a smaller version because the VFR is still ripped. But no one ever accused me of being a ballerina, so uh, I like the big boy. No fun-sized versions for me. I'll take the big one, thank you very much. I'll take the sh the sharing size. <laughs> you like how it looks? I hate the headlight, dude. The headlight bugs me out. I think it looks so dumb. Rips and I don't have to I don't have to close my visor to talk to you guys. I can just put the windshield up. These were cop bikes in some markets here, not everywhere, but I know this if you saw this in your rearview mirror in Europe, you're freaking getting pulled over, man. This was the motorcycle for police officers in Europe. I heard something about like a high-speed shimmy on these things. I'm not sure. It's all Shay, like I thought I saw it start to do a shimmy, but I wasn't sure. But if it's a Honda, there's a fix for it. So I'm I'm actually going to jump on Google later and see if I can look that up cuz I'd read something about the the police officers in Europe having problems with these because of a high-speed shimmy. As it is though, this thing is freaking amazing, man. I mean, it's so much better than the PC800 and it's so much better than the ST1100. But of course, that's why we'd have to sell two bikes to get one bike. Low speed maneuverability, amazing. Of course, it's a cop bike, man. You ain't gonna get a cop bike that you can't do those fancy little donuts on. I'm gonna go ahead and not find out if it has a high-speed shimmy because uh, <laughs> I don't want to go through that. I'm just gonna go ahead and look it up. She at least he doesn't really want to sell the PC800 because she just put all her stickers on it. So I, I get it. She at least he is definitely a sticker hoarder. She's one of those people who like buy stickers from everybody and all the stickers we've gotten from other YouTubers and all that stuff. Puts them in envelopes and files them away because she can't bear to stick them on something. Sticker anxiety, that's what they call it. sticker anxiety. She has huge sticker anxiety. I don't, man, I'll slap on anything. And but she finally overcame it and took uh, like a year's worth of saving stickers from people and plastered the PC800. And now I'm <laughs> now I'm asking her to sell it, so it's probably uh, throwing her sticker anxiety into like maximum overdrive. So how are you gonna have this thing going up to 160 miles an hour? Who has, who's done a 160 on a Honda ST1300? No lie. As usual, when we go visit Burt's, both me and Shaylisi are experiencing uh, major temptations. Temptation, betrayal, and fast motorcycles? Uh, I'd go watch that movie. <sighs> two very different bikes that I like for two very different reasons. <laughs> Let's get out of here before we make a bad decision. All right, guys, I know this video was all over the place, but it was all over the place in ways that I really liked. A bunch of different motorcycles from many different brands. One more thing on Burt's Barracuda here in Tampa. We're actually gonna be there for this coming bike night. That's this coming Thursday. That date will be right down here. They've started doing kind of a cool thing at their Thursday bike nights where they organize a ride to go along with the bike night. And each week they put somebody else in charge of the ride. And this coming up Thursday, our very own Uncle Boga tour. We choose you. He's going to be in charge of the ride. So we're going to be up there supporting him. Make sure you're following Uncle Bogator on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to him here on YouTube and follow us on Instagram so we can keep you guys updated. I'll make a community post here on YouTube as well so people who don't do Instagram and don't do Facebook will also be able to see what the exact details are. But basically, if you're at Birch Barracuda this coming Thursday, around about like 5.30 or so, we're going to be hanging out there all night and also going on a ride. On top of that, we've also got some new stuff available for pre-order on Brapstar.com and also Brapstar.com has 
has been completely redone by Shay Lisi. Totally different experience now. The website looks a thousand times better. What you guys have to remember is the very first Brapstar website I designed myself. Now, I'm not very good at web design, so you know it looked like way more like a you know a Farscape fan site designed on Angel Fire in the late 90s, and it did look like a proper website. Now that Shay Lisi's gotten through with it, it looks absolutely amazing. Summertime is here, so we've decided to do tank tops for the very first time. I've never done them before, and I know they're not going to be for everybody, but I just I really wanted to make these. If you guys are familiar with the bad trip design, when I had that design made, I wanted something that looked like it came out of like some 70s surf shop acid trip type thing. That was the inspiration behind bad trip. And since it's got this like 70s neon surfer acid trip vibe, I thought it was only appropriate to put it on tank tops that look like they came out of a surf shop. So yes, they are neon green and neon pink. These things are gonna be loud. It's a design that I've been wanting to put on clothing for a really long time now. We've done stickers, we've done patches, we've done pins, but I've always wanted to put it on a shirt. I just didn't know how to do it. And now I think I finally figured it out. And once again, I know that neon green and neon pink tank tops ain't gonna be for everybody, but guess what, baby? <laughs> Some people just let their freak flag fly, all right? And they don't mind rolling down the road on a motorcycle in a neon pink tank top. Hey, daddy, I do it all the time. Real weirdos ain't afraid to wear pink. But just in case I bleeding neon pink and neon green is not your thing, we're also doing a reissue of the DIY Eagle, both on a black t-shirt, because honestly, I do be wearing some bright colors. I love my Hawaiian shirts, but usually when it comes to t-shirts, I'm a solid traditional black t-shirt guy. So we're gonna do the DIY Eagle once again on a traditional black t-shirt. We're also gonna do it on a camo t-shirt. So that's gonna be available too. All of those are available for pre-order right now on brapstar.com. You guys know we don't usually keep that going for very long. So, so jump on that now if you wanna let your freak flag fly and let uh, other weirdos in your area know that you are hot and ready to hang out. That's gonna about do it for this one, y'all. Until next time, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? Army. Shade tree. Army. They never give up. They never say die. Walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.